Hey guys, we're going to just continue with what we've been talking about as far as light and it bending and changing direction. So we've talked about convex mirrors and concave mirrors in which light is being reflected back. And so we know lo no light can make it through a mirror. And so our next step is to talk about lenses. And so we've got two types of lenses. We've got convex lenses and concave lenses. So those are our two types. Um, and a lens is what is different about it is it's going to allow light to pass through. And so light's going to pass through, but this lens by shape is going to bend this light based on the shape of the lens. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is a convex lens. So a convex lens is known as a converging lens. It's converging because it's going to bend light towards the focal point or towards the principal axis. And so it's going to bend towards the principal axis. So if you look at this right here, this is going to go through, light's going to go through and hit this lens, and it's going to hit this line. We draw this line, it's just called the line of action, and so we can have all these lights bending at the same point, so we don't have to worry about that drawing of our lens. And so light's going to come in here, and it's going to bend towards the principal axis. Light's coming in, bend towards the principal axis bend towards the principal axis and bend towards the principal axis. And so by the structure of this lens, all this light will converge on one point. And so that point that it converges on is what we call the primary focus. So our primary focus. Now another thing to mention is this exact distance, the primary focus, there's one on the other side and we call that our secondary focus right there. So for a convex lens, the primary focus is behind the lens. And so behind the lens as light comes in it's gonna hit behind it so we're just bending that light towards it so light is bent towards the principal axis and it's gonna meet at the primary focus alright so if we were to draw these pictures we're only gonna draw two rays because it only takes two rays to form an image and so the first ray we're gonna draw is what we call our parallel ray so it kinda works the same way we did mirrors our parallel ray is going to go straight to this lens or straight to this line of action right there Okay, so by rule, this parallel ray, as soon as it hits this lens, is going to refract, so it's going to bend through the principal focus. And so you see it bending through that principal focus. All right, the second one is going to go through the center of this lens. And so what we call it is our center lens. And so all these rays that go straight through the center of the lens are not going to be bent or refracted at all. They're going to just continue straight. And so this is going to continue straight through there. And so our center ray and our parallel ray are going to help form an image. So we've got our object here and it's in front of this lens and so the light's going to hit it and bounce off. So we draw our parallel ray and our center ray and then see that our center ray continues straight and then our parallel ray is going to bend through the primary focus. So where these two meet is where our image forms. Okay, so you can see our image being formed right here. Now there is technically a third ray that goes through the secondary focus, hits this line of action and goes parallel to it. But that's a little bit harder to draw if you don't measure your exact focal points or based on where that object is, it can screw up. And so we're just gonna leave that alone, just keep it simple with our parallel and center ray. So we can identify some same things that we have with mirrors. First of all, our P is our distance from the lens to the object. We know that P is the distance of the object. And so our Q now is going to be the object or from the image to the lens. So the distance from the image to the lens. And we've got Q labeled right here. So from here to here is our image. And so let's try to identify some things about this. This is a little different from mirrors. So for one, it forms a real image. Well, how do we know that? Well, light is actually going through here and bending, and so we know real light rays are passing this lens and converging and forming this image right here. So this is where that image is being formed. All right, so it's actual light ray, so we know it's real image. So it does differ from how we saw a mirror, because a real image would be on the same side as a mirror, whereas a lens, we would expect light to pass through, so a real image is going to be behind the lens. But if we follow the real light rays, we know that it's going to be a real image. The second thing that's a little different is a Q will be positive in this case. So on the right side of the lens is going to be our Q, and so we would expect light to pass through, so our Q is going to be positive for a convex lens in this example. Okay? 
Now, the last thing, it doesn't mean, I just want to reiterate this real quick, it doesn't mean that Q is always positive, but in this case, Q is positive. And so, the last thing we see, the image is inverted, so it's upside down, and then we know that the height of the image is going to be negative then. Okay, so that's where just a little bit about con convex lenses. All right, then we're going to move on to concave lenses. And so concave means diverging. So it means that light is moving away. So it's going to bend light away from the principal axis. So you can see as light comes in, it's going to hit this line of action and go out. And so this light's coming through, it's bending away. This light's coming through and it's bending away from the principal axis. This light's coming through and it's diverging away. So if you remember from our mirrors, if we have diverging, diverging rays, we know that they'll not intersect, so we're not going to ever form an image. Well, if that was the case, then we know to track back these virtual lines. And so the lines, if we track them back, using virtual rays because we know they're not actual light rays it's not reflecting light back so there's not actual light rays that are passing but if we draw these virtual rays we see that there is an intersection and so this intersection is known as our primary focus and so for a concave lens the primary focus is in front of the lens so it's on the same side as the object in front of the lens and it's going to bend light away from the principal axis. So when light bends away from the principal axis, the primary focus is on the same side. All right, so to draw that same picture, we still work with parallel rays, and we still work with center rays. So our parallel ray is going to go straight to this lens, parallel to the principal axis, and now it's going to bend back through the principal focus. Well, you see the principal focus is here, so we're going to just draw that same line, and it's going to diverge away. So this is where it is. It's going to head that direction. And so this is what we call our center ray again, and it goes right through the center of this lens, and it just continues straight. Well, these are diverging, so we know they don't intersect. And so we can trace this line back as a virtual line. Now, if we trace this line back as a virtual line, we are on top of this real ray, so there's no reason to even draw that. But what we see is these two lines intersect right here, and this is where our image is formed. And so you'll see one of these lines is virtual where the other one is real. So what are we going to call that image? Well, we still call it a virtual image because there's a virtual ray that's not actually there that we are using to create this image. So if our eyes were right here, we would see that this light ray came from here, and we would assume that it would follow along that same path. And so our image is formed right here, and so it forms a virtual image. In this case, the Q will be negative. The Q will be negative because we would assume light and light to pass through because it's on this left side. Our Q, which is the distance of the image to the object, is going to be negative. The last thing is the image is upright, so we say the HI or the height of the image is positive. Right? High of the image is positive. So go look at some of these rules real quick. I'll give you some more examples of convex lenses. So if we look right here, we're going to go with these same rules. You know, we had rules in place before, and so we're going to continue with these rules just to kind of keep it simple. So the first rule is rays that come in parallel to the principal axis go out through the primary focus. And so that's what we call our parallel ray, and it's going to bend towards the primary focus. So that's our first rule. The second rule is rays that come through the center of the lens go out along the same path. So this is what we call our center ray. It goes right through the center and continues through. And then the third one is rays that come through the secondary focus, and they go out parallel to the principal axis. So it's going out parallel to the principal axis. And so what we call that is our focal ray. It's not drawn here, but it would be through the secondary focus and then back out. Okay, so um, I've got a little bit of a key for you to look at and some notes just to remember. We're going to look at three examples of convex lenses that can be used in um, maybe a little bit of your everyday life. And so the first thing we want to identify, because this is a convex lens, which one of these two is going to be our primary focus? Well, this one's going to be our primary focus because by rules, that's where the light is going to be bent towards. All right. So when it comes through, it's going to bend through that primary, primary focus. That is now going to become our secondary focus. And so we're just going to draw two rays right here. The first ray is going to be our parallel ray, which continues straight 
to our lens and it's going to bend back through the primary focus and then this is our center ray that goes straight through the center of this lens and continues straight. So where these intersect is where our image is formed. Alright, so in this case you see we've got an image that is very far away. So it's a, a far away image and then we're going to bend this light to create this image right here. And so you know this is a lot smaller than this. Well, this would be an example of a camera or your eyes use this. If we're taking an image that is far away, we need to bend it to our focal point or to our focus so we can see that. And so an example of this, taking an image from far away, would be our eyes. Um, the second we've got is if we move this image a little closer and we go through the same steps. we got our primary ray that bends through our primary focus. All right, and then our center ray that goes right through the center. And so you can see now as we move it closer, this right here is going to bend that light and the image is going to be formed here. It's still inverted. It's still real image. And so here, an example of this would be a projector. We're projecting an image up because this image right here is going to be larger than this right here. So you can see this is larger than our actual object. And so an example of this would be a projector. Now the third one we've got here, and this is something we've all seen before, is if the image, sorry, if the object right here is inside of the secondary focus. So we know this is still our primary focus, but it's our secondary focus. So if we go through this and work through the same points, we see that we can draw this primary or sorry, parallel ray, and it's going to reflect through the primary focus. And then we draw our center ray. Well, these two are diverging. So when diverging lenses happen, we know to trace back into virtual rays. So we can trace this back and trace this back as well, and you see an image is formed right here. Image is formed. And now this is a lot more magnified. This is obviously a lot bigger. So example of this is a magnifying glass, and the image is highly magnified and upright. We know if we look into a magnifying glass, it's going to make an image larger and appear in the same direction. All right. Now the other thing to note, this is when we have a virtual image, because it's not real light rays that are hitting. All right. Now the last thing, just to make sure we're clear and understanding this, if we flip back to the beginning right here, I didn't show you any more examples of this because we know or we can find out as we move this it doesn't really affect how this image is created. It doesn't matter if we move it back or forth. Um, it's just going to change where our image is located but it's not going to change the structure of it. All right. So um, pause this video at any point. Hopefully that helped clear some things up.